Anyone who drives past here will undoubtedly wonder what the story is of these remains of this building so close to the sea. Let's explore the area and find out. We are standing here at the ruins of Agia Fotini, also called a Foti, a Paleo-Christian church built around the year 550 AD. Who was Fotini? And why was she so important to the growth of Christianity? After Constantine the Great gave religious freedom to the inhabitants of the Roman Empire in 313. Try to imagine how wonderful it must have been 1500 years ago to arrive in this bay as a pilgrim after a long walk, with Agia Fotini standing in full regalia by the sea. By chance, the church was discovered during excavation work in the ground in 1972, and under the leadership of Conservator Elias Colliers, the entire complex was restored, and these pillars were put upright again in 1975. The best preserved part of the church is the marble wall, which was part of the iconostasis. This is a richly decorated wall in Orthodox Christian churches, and on the front of this iconostasis, we find a double cross from which the peace symbol that we still know today is later derived. In the middle, we find a luxurious entrance, which in more recent Orthodox Christian churches often also has a holy door which gives us access to the choir with the apse behind it. At the back of the iconostasis, the symbols of the cross are more clearly visible to the layman. The choir still has parts of the original marble floor, and it is also noticeable that the church, like later churches, is oriented with the choir to the east, where the sun rises. That is because Jesus was seen as Solorians, or the light of the world, and this is also the reason that you always see a glow of light around the head of a saint in medieval Christian images. The semicircular apse was the central place for holy relics and also shows the Roman influence of this basilica. A basilica was originally a Roman court and commercial building and the judge sat in the apse. That structure was adopted in Christian basilicas All the way on the other side of the building, we find the entrance to the church with the outdoor square called the narthex. In front of the entrance, the paving is still in very good condition. In the Archaeological Museum of Pigadia, you can find a reconstruction of the basilica based on the archaeological finds here. It is impressive to imagine how the structures of these early Christian churches are still the foundation for virtually every modern church built. On the other hand, the undoubtedly once impressive marble colonnade also beautifully shows the Roman influences. The excavations revealed that the church once had a wooden, three-aisled roof with the pillars serving to support the domes. A keen eye will see that the two outer walls are filled with stones and clay and archaeologists have discovered that the church was built on foundations of an even older Dioscuri temple. The Dioscuri are the famous Greek demigod twins Castor and Pollux. Just as little remains of the current church, the Dioscuri temple has also largely disappeared because later residents demolished it to use the materials for new homes and temples. The northern walls you see here are not of the basilica itself, but of an 8th century pottery workshop, which was built around and within the church itself, making it a multifunctional complex from that time on. These small rooms served, among other things, for storing clay and food, and there was a kitchen. Even today, we'll still find the rubble and waste that was found during the excavations in 1972 in various rooms. Now that we have admired all parts of the church, we can conclude with our promise to tell you where the name comes from. Fotini is the Samaritan woman who meets Jesus at Jacob's well and continues to believe in him. 
Even when Emperor Nero throws her into a well as punishment to force her to renounce her faith, she refuses and dies in a well in Rome in the year 66, the year in which the emperor initiates severe persecutions of Christians. You can imagine that when Christianity was finally allowed in the Roman Empire, she quickly became a saint because of her fierce resistance and even being willing to die for her faith. This church was once built to celebrate the victory of Christianity over the Roman Empire. The local Greek population soon affectionately nicknamed it Aphoti, which is also the nickname of this region to this day. And with that we are back in our time. We think that, after such a time travel, we deserve a drink on one of the terraces. Thanks for watching, and see you again in one of our next videos.